Yo, what is going on everybody? Today I probably have one of my best tutorials I've ever brought you guys. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is I'm teaching you guys a very simple effect that you can do all in Premiere. Um, and this is actually a very cool looking effect that is actually going to lead you guys into creating a lot more crazy looking advanced effects on your own. So what I'm going to teach you guys is a trick to be able to get 3D elements into Premiere without having to use Cinema 4D, Element 3D, going through all that extra work. I'm also going to be talking about how to blend your effects and how to blend your overlaid footage just to make it more accurate. If you do enjoy this video, leave a like. Um, it actually helps so much with this channel. Let's try and hit a thousand likes for this video. Uh, it's a big milestone to reach and I'm pretty sure only a few of my videos have hit that, um, but let's try and strive for that on this video. Also, if you guys are new to the channel and the community, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. I'm putting up daily content with a mix of informational and entertaining stuff for you guys in the video community. But anyways, I'm so I'm going to show you guys how to do this kind of like x-ray vision skeleton effect right here. I'm also going to talk a little bit about keyframing the motion of this, which isn't too hard. But anyways, guys, enough talking. Let me show you guys exactly how we're going to be doing this. So the first thing that we want to do is just add a very simple effect just to add on to this and this is not required but I feel like it makes the but I feel like it makes it look a lot better whenever the effect is complete and that is an invert effect so that is how you kind of get that like x-ray vision um, kind of look so under channel invert it's a built-in premiere effect anyone could do this so once you've added that invert effect just go down here to channel and make sure you change this to the effect that you like so RGB looks like that you can also use luminance which looks a lot more like that original clip and the original clip I actually did use a sapphire invert just to get that okay so now we have the invert effect that we want so it looks very very nice I like how it's looking already um, so now I'm gonna talk about how to add those 3d elements so the way that we're gonna be doing this is we're actually going to be using green screen footage and we're gonna be keying out the color and then using that element as sort of like a 3d effect so if you guys go in the description of this video you're gonna find a um, downloadable file where you can get this and all this is as I'm gonna show you is it's the skeleton right here um, and it's just a lot of him rotating like this so what we can actually do is we can take a part out that we'd like so we're just gonna select a few frames of that we're gonna make two cuts and then we're just gonna take this little snippet of this green screen skeleton and we're going to drag it over here I'm also going to hold down alt and just delete that clip so that we don't have any extra audio which we don't want and I'm just gonna bring the green screen uh, skeleton over our clip So now as you see we have our green screen skeleton and uh, we have our green background so what we're gonna do is click on this arrow right here and go to effects and then we're going to look up ultra we're gonna come down here to the King folder and take the ultra key effect and just place that right on our clip and then come up here to your effect controls in the top left, come down here to ultra key, click on your key color and just key out that green. So there's also some of this, so we're gonna crop that out later. Okay guys, so once you've keyed out your color, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna crop out everything that we don't like. So I'm actually gonna come over here to our effect controls again and just click on this box next to motion. I'm just gonna drag this up and make it bigger um, so that we can have, uh, so that we can see this more clearly. And now I'm gonna click away and then I'm going to go back on my clip and I'm going to go down here to effects and look up crop. So then just take this crop effect and place it onto your clip. And then go back up to your effect controls, slide all the way down until you find the crop effect, which is right here. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here to crop. Right underneath you're going to see this pen tool. So we're going to select this and it's going to make a mask. And we're just going to mask out everything that we don't want. So I feel that for this clip it looks better if it's just... Um, the chest uh, and if it's just the chest and the skull but if you guys really want you do not have to key out the limbs so it's just gonna take a lot more work um, when it comes to the keyframing so so if you're deciding to keep in the arms and the legs keep following the same exact steps except you're gonna have to keyframe all those separate so that might sound complicated now um, but just follow along and we're just gonna keep going so once you've created that mask what you're gonna do is just come down here and just make one of these 100 and that's just and that's just gonna crop it out then click inverted and that's gonna get rid of everything that we don't want so now we have a very good crop we have just the chest and we have pelvis and we have the skull so I'm actually gonna come over here click this box again and uh, start actually positioning this where I'd like it to be okay so now we're gonna start blending this in with our actual footage so just click on your clip of the green screen skeleton and then just come over here to opacity click that little drop down arrow and then come over here to blend mode we're gonna make this exclusion so you can actually play around with whatever blend mode you like. It's whatever uh, your own personal preference uh, enjoys. So if you just mess around with these, it's all going to give you a different kind of look. Uh, for example, soft light, overlay. But like I said, I'm going to use exclusion because I think it looks best for this. Um, we're also going to make the opacity 50 just so it blends a little bit more with the background. So now we have this, and I think that looks very good. So now all we have to do is actually just keyframe for the motion as well as isolate the skull because if you see in this clip, his head is bobbing up and down. So to be able to do this, what we're going to have to do is I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and I'm just going to click this clip and drag up. That's going to make a duplication. So now we actually have two skeletons, so if I hide this, you can see that there's two. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to add another crop. 
on the top layer, and this layer is going to be the layer for just our skull. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to go over to crop, and we're actually going to use a uh, ellipse mask for this one. So just a circle, and we're going to place it right about here, and then we're going to shrink it so that we're cutting off just the skull like that. So now once you've done that, uh, what you're going to want to do is make left 100, and then you're going to invert again. So now if I hide these layers, you're going to see that this layer is just the skull, which is what we want. Thing is, we need to get rid of the skull on this layer just because we only just because we only want the chest for this layer. So that might not make sense, but just follow along. It'll make sense in about five seconds. Click on our original layer that has the skull and the chest. And what we're going to do is we're going to just add another crop effect. And this time we're going to do literally the same exact thing. We're going to come down here, elliptical mask tool, and we're just going to crop out all of the skull. And this time, instead of inverting it, we're just going to make this 100, and we're, gonna, and we're going to leave it like that. So now let me just show you exactly what these look like, just to give you guys better representation of what you, we're looking for. So if I hide if I hide the very top layer, you'll see that this is just the chest and the pelvis, which is what we had originally. And then if I hide our very first layer, you'll see that this is just the skull. So now we can keyframe this to move and do what we want, as well as we can keyframe only the body to do what we want. So if you guys are wanting to add in the arms and the legs, you're gonna have to redo crops on all those just to be able to keyframe them. Okay guys, so one more thing before we start keyframing the motion of this. Um, if you guys run out of duration, like for example, um, this clip is too short and this is how long we want the effect to last. Instead of taking this and adding the duration, which is going to make it rotate because of the original video clip, what we're going to do is just hold down Alt and just keep duplicating this original thing right here and just make it the length of the um, clip that we'd like. So right here, and then what we're going to do is just select all of those we're going to right click and we're going to nest them. So that's actually going to mess up the blending mode. So we're just going to go back and I'm going to re-add that exclusion and that 50% that we talked about a little bit earlier. Okay. Okay. So now this is all ready to go. And what we're going to do now is just keyframe the motion. So whenever he's moving, the skeleton chest is moving with him, and it looks like it's actually part of him. So what we're going to do to do this is just click on our clip. Go up here to motion and then for position and rotation we're just going to click on both of those little animation toggle buttons so now since we're at the very beginning we're just going to move over keyframe by keyframe by clicking the arrow keys so i'm actually going to click this square next to motion again so i can change it and i'm going to make my starting position so right about here looks accurate i'm going to go over one keyframe by using the right arrow key i'm going to dip it a tiny bit like that and then just try and make it look as accurate as possible. So what you want to do is just go a few keyframes and then just adjust it a tiny bit like that. Um, you don't have to adjust it every single keyframe or it's going to look like it's a little bit too like jumpy and wobbly. So like that, just a tiny bit. And then we're going to drop a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to play that and you'll see. So we can now see that the effect is starting to actually start to uh, look a lot more accurate and a lot more in place. So if I play it, you can see that it looks like it's like a straight x-ray vision. It's like the chest is really part of him. It's moving up with him, dropping with him. So now we're going to do the same exact thing with the skull. So like I said, let's just, so like I said, let's just bring the skull up. I'm going to do that same thing where I'm duplicating the clips just to make it the full duration of the actual clip. So if you guys have to do that, make sure you do. And then I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to nest them. And then I'm going to go back up and just fix the opacity, make sure that it's on exclusion and 50%. All right, so now we're ready to start with this. So we're going to do, so we're going to do the same exact thing, go up here to motion, and then just bring this skull up a little bit where you think it should be at the starting position. So the skull for this clip is a little bit trickier because not only is it moving up and down, um, but it's actually rotating whenever he dips his head like that. So we're going to have to keyframe our rotation too. So I'm just going to move the rotation a tiny bit. And I'm just going to set it where it looks a little bit more accurate. So right about here is a good starting position. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. Just move over with my right arrow key. And then every time he dips his head like that, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to bring my uh, keyframe of my rotation super down like that. So this one's going to be about like 50%. So it's a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, um, the end is going to look really good. Okay, so I just went through, did all my keyframes for my rotation and my positioning, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So as you can see, it follows the head pretty well, and then, but you can see there's a little bit of separation, so we're just going to go and adjust keyframes down below. So to do that, just select our chest, and then find the spot where we want to adjust. So right here, we're going to just bump it up a tiny bit for the chest. Like right about here, we're going to move over, and for here, we're also going to bump it up 
tiny bit for the chest uh, as accurate as possible it doesn't have to look perfect there we go so we adjusted our keyframes and we created this cool looking little skeleton skeleton thing which is following his motion which I think looks really good and that's about it so if your effects still looking a little bit choppy you can just add feathering to the crop just to blend it a tiny bit better but it's all up to you make sure you guys add your own little twist to your stuff but anyways guys thank you for watching this video I hope you guys enjoyed leave a like comment and subscribe let me know what you'd like to see next in the comment section below also today we're double uploading there should be another reacting to your guys work going up today so hope you guys enjoy that but anyways guys thank you for watching and i'll see you guys later